all stand. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord that has walked into this house today. Amen. I want us to right now go before the Lord in prayer. We have many needs that we need God to see. God to begin to in, intervene on and we know that what Brother Greg has preached today was more than just a sermon but God sent a word from heaven. Amen. I hope you understand that by now this is not just another day. Amen. But this is an appointment from heaven. I want us to pray for Charlotte do truce right now. She needs healing in her body. We know that this sickness has, has affected so many people. Amen. But they have now taken her amen, off and weaned her off of the oxygen or off of the vent. And we give God praise for that. Sister Diane Barber still needs a miracle in her body. And we know that God is able to heal. Amen. I believe God can, can do something before now and it's the appointment for the surgery. I still believe God is able to heal. I still believe God is able to intervene for Sister Diana. And I speak and declare healing virtue into them today. Amen. I want us to pray for Brother Dickey. Amen. It's down in his back that God would touch and minister to him today as well. Tim Wally. Amen. I want us to pray that Amen. Comfort for this family. He passed away and he needs Amen. Comfort for his family today. Percy um, needs healing. This is one of Sister Amanda's workers. Uh, Percy and James needs a miracle in their body. Amen. One is not, uh, James Jenkins has not responded in the last several weeks to anything. And Percy, his kidneys are starting to shut down, and we need a miracle. If you know somebody in the building that needs a miracle, would you lift up your hands right now? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, trusting and having faith, Lord, that you are aware of these needs here today. And I'm asking you through the blood of the Lamb and the power of your name that is by your stripes we are healed. And I declare virtue to flow into those hospital rooms. Oh, God, I speak, God, the Lord, into every one of these needs here today. God, you are more than able. Your blood is more powerful than cancer. Your blood is more powerful than COVID-19. Your blood is more powerful, God, than any sickness. Because, God, you said by your stripes we were healed. It's a past tense. The blood has already been applied. And I speak, God, into these that need a miracle touch. God, unless you move, God, the Lord Jesus, we know the outcome. But I know a God that changes the outcome. And I pray, God, healing and strength for these families. In Jesus' name, I rebuke the Lord God, the spirit of our age. I rebuke the spirit of this sickness, God. Hallelujah. And I know that you're more than an able God. Hallelujah. You're more than able. In Jesus' mighty name, I feel a transition for our service today. Amen. We have so many needs that are here. We know that God is moving upon the behalf of his children. Amen. The Bible says, make your request known to him, and God will do the rest. I don't know what your request is, sir, ma'am, here today, but I promise you there is a Savior that's here, and he's wanting and desiring to do something on your behalf today. Amen. We just got finished hearing about faith and trust in our, in, becoming as one. I wonder today, before we leave for the sanctuary, could we move into a transition, a merger, where faith and trust becomes one? Because faith and trust sees beyond the current and sees what can be. Amen. Today, I'm going to give you a chance and opportunity. Amen. If we, we, Brother Greg Albright will be with us again next weekend. I'm asking you to please uh, be in much prayer for this services today and also again next week. I'm asking anybody to please, we have some that are home today, just not feeling well. Amen. And we've asked them to be uh, respectful and, and just give it some days and let's see what is going on. But we're going to move and flow and operate in faith. Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to give you a chance and opportunity. I know it's a little bit different format this morning, but would you bring your tithe and offer to the Lord? And we're going to go directly into our praise and our worship. And Brother Greg's going to get up and preach. 
There is a spirit of the Lord that has walked into this house today. And church, you hear your pastor. God is wanting to intervene. God wants to show you he really is who he says he is. But we've got to move into a realm called faith and trust. If you will trust me, if you will show faith, it's time to put some faith to action today. Does anybody have some faith to show God, I'm going to worship you in spite of? I'm going to magnify you in spite of? I know that everything is dim and grim around me, but I know a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond what I can ask or think. I come to tell you today, the Lord's in this house. I feel the unctions of the glory of God. And if you need a miracle for somebody in your family, why don't you worship a miracle for them today? Why don't you worship a blessing for them today? Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to come and bring your tithe and offering to the Lord. And please stay around as we go into our time of worship. Do I have any worshipers in the building today? Amen. Somebody needs to worship for your miracle.
walked into this place today to let you know I'm still here. I'm still with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder right now? Hallelujah. And I want you to begin to pray for your neighbor right now. All over the building. Heavenly Father, right now as we link ourselves together, as we put our hands on our neighbor's shoulder, I pray God for one to the other. Let there be a release of the supernatural power of healing and strength. I speak over this church body tonight. I speak over them as the pastor, as the shepherd and the watchman of the wall. And I speak healing. I speak strength. I bring the blood of Jesus over their families. I bring the blood of Jesus over their homes. In the name of Jesus, we will walk in faith.
Hallelujah. Because he's here. Just as real as if he physically walked in. He's here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for those sweet prayers of, of encouragement. Means so much. Amen. Friday was all day orientation for my oldest in college. Uh, first first trip to college and and um, she she's uh, only 17 but she got to skip a year in high school in a Becca program if you're making straight A's you get to skip a grade don't know why we did that but we did so she's entering college a year early and then my middle daughter be starting her homeschool here in a day or two and my boy Creed started school this week and, and so just thank you for those prayers over our family and, and our journey and ministry. Do We do trust the Lord to lead and guide our every step and pray to be a vessel, a vessel for him. Amen. In Jesus' name. I do have some things I feel to share today, feel a word from the Lord. I'm praying that God will, will bless it and lead and guide. And so let's just take another moment. And just let God know that our hearts are open. One of my favorite songs says, Word of God speak, pour down like rain. Just minister to us. And that's what we want, the Word of God. And whatever God has for us today, could you do that with me right now? Just let him know, Word of God speak. Let your spirit minister to us today. Let your word, which is forever anointed, settled in heaven, let it be settled in our lives. Let it minister in our life today. Word of God speak. Settle some things in our hearts. Minister some things in our spirit today, Jesus. Word of God speak. Word of God speak. Hallelujah. Just tell him that. Say word of God. Amen. Through your preached word, through your written word. Word of God speak. Hallelujah. We open our hearts. We surrender to you. We yield to you. Amen. As always, honored to be with all of you, dear friends. Brother and Sister Jenkins in this church, I love you all so very, very much. I am not going to do a traditional text and title this morning. I'm just going to begin, begin and just walk through what, what the Lord has, has uh, shared with us to share today. I was at a at a a funeral of a dear friend on Wednesday. One of the most praying pure spirited men that I know in, uh, from the Pentecostals of Alexandria, a gentleman by the name of, of Joe Moore. Joe was was nobody, nobody in my entire life prayed for you exactly like Brother Joe did. He was used in the gifts of the Spirit and that would come out in his praying. He, he just, when he'd pray for you, just the Spirit would minister. I've seen him minister to 15, 20 people in a row at prayer meetings at POA where he just moved from one to the other and you you knew you were just going to be ministered to and encouraged and strengthened um, by something from the Lord and, and a year or two ago uh, cancer somewhere in his stomach somewhere in his, his uh, organs cancer began to eat at his body and, and um, we knew without God that it was terminal doctors had said it's you know a few months ago it was beyond them and, and uh just a wonderful wonderful man a friend lived in our neighborhood he'd stopped by our house and, and visit and took creed under his wings the last year creed's got two deer antlers on his wall that uncle joe gave him and, and an old lantern and, and a, a old trap just brother joe loved to collect things and he shared some things with creed and on Brother Joe's deer lease was an old Indian site that he had found and he would dig and he, man, he had some beautiful um, 
you know, carved out of stone arrowheads and, and carving tools that he had found. And so he'd give Creed, he, he, Creed has them in his room, um, some things that Brother Joe had given him. And, and Creed, tender heart that he is, when Brother Joe would give him a cool arrowhead or whatever, Creed would run into his room and say, well, Daddy, I can't, he can't give me something without me giving him something back. And and I had bought Creed some uh, petrified, like, shark teeth and stuff at a creation deal we went to, and they had several neat things. And I mean, I mean, high-dollar stuff. And Creed runs in the back and comes out and gives all his shark teeth to Brother brother Joe and uh, different things that, that they traded. And, and uh, I loved it. But God chose last week to take Brother Joe home in a very emotional, very tender a week uh, and beautiful in the eyes of the Lord or the death of his saints but it still hurts when God takes them home and so we were part of that we were, were Paul Bear and, and Creed it was to be his first day of school and he he wanted to go he wanted to be at the visitation he wanted to be at the, uh, the service and go to the graveside and so and so we did but something happened at the graveside that touched me very, very deeply. And that is a couple, a couple sang a song at the graveside, at the, the burial. The couple was Brother Joe's nephew and his wife. Philip played the guitar and Philip's wife sang two songs. And they led those gathered at the, the burial, led us in those worship choruses and those, those songs. And she sang a couple of the verses as solos, and it was just beautiful. But what made it so heavy is that young couple were two days removed from burying their boy. They have two daughters, they were to have a son, but when their boy Ezra was born, he only lived for a day or two, and he went into eternity. So they're in Illinois, and they they have a funeral, and they bury their their baby boy, and then travel from Illinois to Louisiana within 48 hours, or involved in Brother Joe's funeral, and just touched me so deeply that and God was giving them strength and we talked afterwards and prayed the Lord would help me to say a word or two to encourage their hearts but it ministered to me that they were not just singing to brother Joe when they're singing about heaven but they're singing to their own selves and they're encouraging their own selves but it's normal it's understandable that their child died, and so they they had to just to stay with me. Their child died, and so they had to bury that child. It's very normal that Brother Joe died, and we we buried Brother Joe. But in their case, small child passed away, and so the process was they had a funeral, and the baby was child was put back in the earth and buried. I want to go to a scripture in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. Again, I don't have a text or title. I'm just going to walk through this chapter for a little while. The Bible says, and it fell on a day. If you have your Bible or your smartphone, you may want to follow through because I'm going to go verse by verse for a little and uh, or it'll be on the screen. It fell on a day that Elisha, the man of God, the prophet Elisha, passed to Shunem, where there was a great woman. Different versions say she was a prominent woman, a, a lady of great influence. This lady constrained the prophet to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned it in thither to eat bread. I guess even back in the Old Testament, they knew preachers liked to eat. <laughs> and 
And I'm assuming it was more than just bread. It was a full meal. It's just the way it's worded. But she constrained the prophet. Man of God, come in my house. We want to feed you. Then in verse 9, she said unto her husband, Behold, I perceive this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. She had perception. She knew this wasn't just another human being. This was a man, she said, a holy man of God. And she did something that was, and they did something that was pretty impressive and it's, it's pretty powerful concept for all of us to consider. She said, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be. So, so they, they, they made a, a little guest chamber. They made... A, a guest house for the prophet. A bed, a table, a stool, a candlestick, and a good meal. Amen. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you as a traveling preacher, that's pretty good accommodations right there. I'm going to go ahead and tell you as a traveling preacher, thank you all for that wonderful basket that was in my hotel room last night. I'm going to go ahead and tell you thank you for that little case of eight bottled waters. Three of them disappeared in about two minutes. And that, that little bag of jerky and that little bag of, of, of candy bars, amen. The jerky's all gone, and I, I, I held myself to two of the little candy bars. But thank you for taking care of the man of God. But that came on to her heart that, look, we've invited this man to eat. But let's, let's make room. Let's, let's build a little guest chamber for the prophetic, for the voice of the prophet in our lives. And so, so she said, and it may be that when he cometh to us or when he passes this way, that he'll turn in thither. Somebody says she made room in her life for the prophet. She made room in her life for the word of God to speak. She made room in her life. Her and her husband made the effort for God's word to speak in their lives. And I believe that that's something we all can consider is God help us. Amen. Help us acknowledge and be aware as she did. She said, this is a holy man of God. Help us be aware. God's word and the speaking of God's word in our life is a holy thing. And she acknowledged it. And she said, we're going to build a guest, a little guest room, a prophet's chamber. Verse 11 says, and it fell on a day that he, Elisha, came thither. And he turned into the chamber and lay there. And then he says to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite, call this lady. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said, Elisha, verse 13, says uh, to, to Gehazi, he's communicating through his servant. He, he said, look, you've been very careful for us. You've shown a lot of care to us. The prophet is talking. The word of God is speaking. What can I do for you? Amen. What can I do? Do you see that? It's in verse 13. What shall be done for thee? Would you like for me to speak to the king, which lets me know Elisha had favor? Or would you like me to talk to the captain of the host? Maybe he, he, he said, I'll, I'll help you get favor in the country, or I'll give you extra protection in the land. I'll, I'll speak that. And, and she's like, no, I, I'm okay. I dwell among my own people. Let me just say here, when you acknowledge and make room for the voice of the word of God in your life, and you honor 
and you make room for the prophet, at some point the word of God is going to say, I want to minister to you. I want to speak to you. I want to bless you. And we honor God. He honors us. The prophet said, what, what can be done for you? And so then, she said, no, I'm okay. I dwell among old people. Verse 14, he said, what is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, verily, she hath no child. Her husband is old. Gehazi's given hints to Elisha. Gehazi's saying, this may be something that this lady would desire that she's even hesitant to ask for. And so then the prophet says, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And the prophet spoke. And the prophet said about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Several months down the road, According to the time of life, you're going to have a child. You're going to have a son. Her answer to me it, it, it is so revealing. She didn't want to be heartbroken. She didn't want her dreams to be crashed again. I, I have friends. I'm sure you have, you have people that you know, maybe even someone in this room, that conception maybe through medical situations or reasons, didn't come easy. And I, I've known husbands and wives that prayed and sought God and spent much money for the process medically of, of seeking after a child in their life. Some friends that it's, it's hurt so deeply. And, and if she was getting later in life and had no, no child, then, and now a prophet is saying, I, 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 in just a little while, in just a few months, I am, I am prophesying over you. I am speaking a God word to you. Amen. You're going to have a son. Her answer said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, don't lie unto your handmaid. She said, no, no, don't tease me. Don't, don't even mention this if it's not something that can come to. But no, don't, don't even throw that out there. It's too sensitive. It's too too tender. Don't, don't, don't. Man, you're a man of God. I've honored you. I've respected you. But this better be a word from God. Do not lie unto your handmaid. Verse 17, and the woman conceived. And the woman bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. The word was from God. The prophecy was from God. And God allowed her to carry that child, to become impregnated and carry that child and to give birth. Can you imagine the joy? Can you imagine the excitement? Can you imagine her, her rejoicing? The prophet didn't lie to me. God has heard my cry. The thing that I was scared to ask. The thing that seemed too big. Amen. God has brought it to pass. It's the promise. Somebody say the promise. promise. The promise of God. I, I'm seeing it come to fruition. So the child was born. Verse 18. Doesn't give us an age. But the Bible says, and when the child was grown. I don't know. I just imagine about 10 years old, 8 or 10 years old. The Bible says when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out. Time has passed. Years have passed. Even though it's the next verse in the story. Several years have passed. The prophet's not at the house on this day. He's He's somewhere else. He's, he's, he's on his journeys. When the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, 
carry the child, which makes me think he's still a young child, maybe even six or seven, because the, in the story, he, the, the father says to a lad, carry him to his mother. So in some form, he's still a small boy. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. He was a promise. He was a word from God. He was birthed because it came from God. He only happened because it was a move of the spirit and a work of the word and a work of the power of Almighty God. They rejoiced in the, re in the birth. They rejoiced in the process. They had rejoiced in what was given to them. But now on a day, my head, my head, and sitting on his mother's lap, he died. And in the normal process of life, at that moment, with all the trauma and all the hurt and all the grief, it would have been normal for her to begin the process of whatever was normal for that day for the coroner to come and say the child is dead and for the process to be beginning for a funeral to take place to lead to a burial amen that's normal i open with a story of a child going into eternity and that process was taking place that's understandable because when a child passes away or an adult passes away, that is the process. But this wasn't just any child. This was a promise. This was a word from God. And I'm not preaching about babies and I'm not preaching about children, but I am preaching about revival and I'm preaching about our promises and I'm preaching about the things that God has birthed from heaven. It didn't come from man. It didn't come from man's womb. It didn't comes from man's process. God, God is the one who authors promises in our life. God is the one who authors revival in a community. God is the one who authors some things. Amen. That lady didn't author that baby being born. Her womb, amen, was the carrier. But the prophet said, you're going to have a God. speaking to some people today that God has burned some things in your life. It wasn't the flesh. It wasn't the world. It wasn't the devil. It wasn't you. It's some things that God burned. And when it's something that comes from God, amen, uh, uh, amen, it's, it's not God's will for that to die. So it would have been normal it would have been normal if she would have began the planning phases for a funeral and a burial, but not when it's a promise, not when it's a direct result of a word from God. In verse 21, she went up. And she laid him on the bed of the man of God. That room that she had built because she acknowledged the holy. That room that she built because she acknowledged the sacred. That room that she had built because she acknowledged. There, there's something. There's a connection from heaven that's happening. That room that she has built. She said, I'm taking that promise. My promise may seem like it's dead. But I'm taking my promise to that room. My promise is not going to any other room in the house. My promise is going in that room. That's the word. That's the man that God used. That's the word that came to me. I'm putting this child in that room. And so she laid the child on the bed of the man of God. And she shut the door upon him and went out. And she called her husband, verse 22, and said, send me one of the young men. Send me one. Get me one of the donkeys. I'm going to run to the man of God and we'll be back. And he said, why, why are you going? Now, he knows the child has died, but he said, why are you going to, to the prophet today? Notice this. It's, there must have been days it was acceptable. He said, it's not the new moon. It's not the Sabbath. And she said, it shall be. 
well. Amen. I believe in her mind right here. She she's remembering when she looked and, and if you could if you please, she looked in God's eyes and said, Don't tease me. She looked in God's eyes and said, Don't even bring this up unless you're giving Amen. And she said, It shall be willed. She saddled the donkey, said to her servant, Drive. She said, Don't she said, You get going, don't back up, slack not riding for me unless I tell you. She's like, Ride hard. We're getting to the prophet. Verse 25, she went and came to the man of God, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when he saw him far off, he said to Gehazi, Behold, there's the Shunammite lady. Run now, meet her, and ask her, Is it well with her? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. When she came to the man of God in the hill, she caught him by the feet. She fell on the ground. She caught him by, by the feet. Amen. And, and Gehazi, the servant, came to thrust her away. I, there, there was protocol of how to approach a king, how to approach a prophet. And she, she, she was desperate. The servant was like, no, you can't just do that. And, and the man of God said, let her alone. Her soul is vexed within her. The Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. He was a prophet, but God didn't reveal to him that the promise had seemed to die. God didn't reveal to him that the son, the, the child that he had spoken the prophetic word over was, was now dead. And, and, and so it was hidden from him. Then she spoke to the prophet, verse 28, and she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did, did I, am I the one who did this is what she's saying. She's saying, no, you're the one who brought it up. God's the one who authored this. God's the one who did this process. She said, I told you, don't deceive me. I've got to tell somebody holding on to some promises today. God is not a deceiver. God is not a deceiver. Some of you got some promises in your Holy Ghost. You got some promises in your life. You got some promises in your family. You got some promises in this church. God is not a deception artist. You birthed this. You, you're the one who brought this up. I said, don't deceive me. Then the prophet says to Gehazi, gird up thy loins. Take your staff in your hand. Take my staff in your hand and go thy way. If you meet any man, don't even salute him. Don't even say hello. Don't even answer. Get to that child. Lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, the mother of this promised child said, as the Lord lives and as thy soul lives, I will not leave thee. And he arose, the prophet arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them. So she's with the prophet. Amen. And Gehazi is headed, verse 31, to the house. And he gets there and lays the, the staff on the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing. So then Gehazi makes his way back to the prophet and to the mother who's on their journey and said, the child is not awakened. Let me just take a moment here and let me just share with you all for just a minute. When that child passed away and that child is brought to the bed of the prophet. She was signifying my promises that came from God. The things that came from God, they're not going to any other room in the house. If there's any hope, I'm taking it. I'm taking it into this room, into this atmosphere where God's word came. And then when she went for help, somebody hear me. Amen. When she went for help, she didn't just go anywhere. She didn't go for the doctor. She didn't go for the counselor. She didn't go for any other help. She said, I'm on a, I'm on a mission. I will not stop till I'm at the feet of the prophet. I will not stop till I'm at the feet of the one where this word came from. I will not stop until I'm in his presence. I've got some promises. Honey. When you get some promises from God and it seems like they're dying, when you get some promises from God and it seems like hell swarms in and hell's winning, when you get some promises from God, a calling from God on your life, Life, revival to your family God starts stirring and working and then hell starts showing up trying to choke the life 
out of that promise, you don't go on a mission to get words from a hundred different directions. Amen. When your promise starts dying, you better get a hold of God. Amen. When your promise is being challenged, you better get a hold of God. She didn't go anywhere else. She didn't let anything to hurt to deter her. She didn't let anything stop her from getting to the prophet, to the one who brought her the word, amen, to, to the one who represented heaven to her. And she found him and she said, I, I will not leave. Amen. I've got some promises. You've got some promises that were birthed by God. But you mark it down. If it's from God, hell's going to try to kill it. But hell can't kill it if it's from God. Hear me? So she went. She went. The prophet said, I will not leave. And so Gehazi says in the end of 31, the child is not awake. Verse 32, when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead, laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door upon him and prayed unto the Lord. The Bible doesn't say how long he prayed. He just prayed. He went up. And then he laid upon this child. He put his mouth upon the child's mouth. His eyes on the child's eyes. His hands upon the child's hands. And he stretched himself upon the child. And the flesh of the child waxed warm. Amen. If I had a title today, I would just say, please, don't bury the baby. If I had a title today, I would say, please don't bury the promise of God in your life. If I had a title today, I would say, please don't bury the revival that's been birthed in this community. Amen. I'm not sure how it looks for you right now. I'm not sure how circumstances look for you right now. Amen. But God has birthed some things. God has birthed some things. And it's not time to put them in the ground. It's time to lift them to the presence, the presence of the prophetic and to lift them, amen, into the hands of Almighty God. Amen. God's presence is going to lay on top of some promises today. God's presence is going to put his mouth on some mouths of some promises. God's presence is going to put his eyes and his hands. That prophet laid on top of that promise and he prayed and he spoke and he believed until it came back to life. I may be preaching to somebody that the enemy's saying, called? You, you think you were ever called? Revival in this community? Revival in your church? Deliverance for addicts? What are you talking about? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I don't care how strong the enemy may come in and try to say, I'll choke the life out of your revival. And I'll choke the life out of what the Spirit wants to do. And I'll choke the life out of your family or your home. I come speaking under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Don't bury the baby. Bring it back in the presence of God. God's going to do some it's a promise. Not when it was authored by God. Not when it was originated from the heavens. The prophet prayed, laid himself on that promise and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then the Bible says the prophet returned, walked in the house to and fro. I just see him pray and said, okay, God, it's warm, but the, uh, we need more than warm. Yeah. He went up and stretched himself again on the child. And the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Yeah. The prophet called the servant and said, get his mom. Yeah. When she walked in, he said, here's your son. Here's 
please. 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 Don't bury the baby until you've got it all the way in God's presence with God's word speaking. I won't go. By the way, if you're a guest or a friend this morning, I may be lighter and cut up next time. I just came today. I've got to share as God's put on our hearts. And I don't call myself a prophet, but I feel like one today. For the unction of the Holy Ghost. I won't share all the verses, but in Genesis, God spoke to Abraham at 75 years old. Sarah, just a decade, his wife younger than him, that your seed, your offspring, is going to become a mighty nation, and I'm going to bless it. Abraham couldn't figure it out. So in the preceding, in the following chapters after chapter 12, 13, where the promise came, Abraham was like, well, maybe my servant can be the one. And God said, no, I said your offspring from your loins. Then he gets in the flesh. Time is passing. And one of his servants has his child. Thinking, well, maybe her womb can be open. Still Abraham's child. Promise can come from that. God said, no, not your servant. Your loins, your wife is going to have a child. This is not just a child. God said all nations of the earth are going to be blessed through this child. God had covenant plans through this child. It's a promise. Straight from God. Isaac's born. Miracle. Abraham's 100. Sarah's what, 90? Isaac's born. Whew. God did it. We've got a promise. We've got something from the heavens. God, God help. But Abraham and Sarah, still their bodies, still carry the baby. Promise. God put it in them. They had a little boy. But then one day God says, Abraham, take your son, your only son, take him to the mountain and sacrifice him. Now, the heathen gods, the heathen folks in that day would offer their firstborn to their gods. Maybe God was just testing. Can you imagine what would go through Abraham's mind? This is a promise. This is covenant and future generations. And you're asking me to take him and, and take his life. That makes no sense. God says take him to an altar sacrifice give him to me please hear me it was never God's will for Isaac to die God knew from the minute he asked Abraham I'm not trying to get Isaac to that altar up there I'm getting Abraham to that altar up there because that boy Isaac is my promise and my promise is not going to die my promise is going to live and that boy is going to bless future generations God didn't call Isaac to the altar for Isaac God called Isaac to the altar for Abraham. What are you saying, Brother Greg? I'm saying the promise came from God, but God said, you're kind of holding on to it too much like it's yours. I'm going to take it to a place where you let go of it again, and you give it all the way back to me, and you think it's about to be dead, but in that moment, I'm going to step in the situation, and I'm going to revive. Isaac was never supposed to die. God said, I'm just taking you, Abraham, to an altar, and you're going to give him back to me, and then now, I know I can bless the whole earth. God. When Abraham laid that boy on that altar, God said, now I know you're not holding on to it like it's yours. You're not gripping it and, and trying to control it. You just gave the promise back to me. Now I am truly going to bless the whole earth 
through you. Amen. So what are you saying, Brother Greg? I'm saying sometimes when revival is birthed, sometimes when calls from God are birthed, sometimes when things are God are birthed, and then a little ways down the road, it seems like they're being brought to a place of death. God doesn't want the revival to die. God doesn't want your calling to die. God doesn't want his great things in your life to die, but God will take you to a place where you're saying, God, you gave it to me, but it don't seem like any way. I release my grip. I give it back to you. Amen. It's all yours. Amen. I, 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 I let it go to you. In the minute Abraham said, I give that promise back to you. God said, we ain't about to bury this kid. This kid is coming. He's promised. But I was getting you to the place where you gave it to me again. So, just know, when God puts apostolic revival, when God puts a calling, when God puts a word, when God puts promises on your life, it's going to be birthed. But it's going to be brought to an altar where it seems like no way. And God said, well, in case you were going to try to say, well, I helped that happen, I'm taking it to a place where you know you didn't help it happen. My promise is going to live. Some of you may be walking a journey where you're calling, you're anointing, revival in your life. You feel like things are being tested. Maybe God's just bringing you to a place with your eyes to say, it's a promise. You gave it to me. But I'm not burying it. I'm putting it back in your hands. And I'm believing it's going to live. Let's move to Jesus Christ. I'm almost done. But Jesus Christ. Salvation for the planet. Promise of revival, deliverance, salvation. All, all of those things. Now he did get buried. But only for three days in a borrowed tomb. Because they knew he wasn't going to keep it off. God's promise for revival looked like it died. All right? But was it God's will for Jesus to stay dead? No. He went to that altar. I read something one time that triggered maybe some of the thinking of what I'm preaching today. But it said Mary and Joseph could look at baby Jesus and they could say, we helped do that. Mary could look at baby Jesus and say, I helped do that. But when Jesus steps out the tomb, no human being could stand there and say, I helped do that. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all today. Amen. Abraham and Sarah could look at Isaac and say, we, we helped. But when Isaac gets off of that altar, there was no human help there. God provided. God did the work. Amen. So when God... I thought it was from God. It was. I thought it was from the heavens. It was. I thought God was doing a work in my life. He is. I thought God put an anointing on our church and our family. I, I thought, he is. Well, why does it seem like the enemy would try to come and choke? I, 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 I'll tell you why. Because it, 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 it's the enemy realizing it's from God. But honey, if it came from God, hell can't kill it. I like to say it this way. Because Jesus was the son of God, Herod had to try to kill him. I mean, Satan had to try to wipe Jesus out. If he's the son of God, right? But you know what? Because he's the son of God, Herod can't kill him. The devil can't stop him. Because it's God's son, Devil's going to try because it's God's son. He can. And what's been birthed in you and what's been birthed in this church, the revival and anointing and the purity from God is from God. Amen. And hell may try to stop it because it's from God, but he's not going to be able to stop it because it's from God. You hear me? Amen. The callings and the anointings in your life. I, I want to say one or two more things. Can we just close our eyes and lift our hands to the Lord right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Don't bury. Don't bury the child. 
Don't bury the promises. Don't bury your anointing. Brother Greg is dead. Brother Greg it, it laid on my lap and died. She said, I, I know what happened, but I'm not putting it anywhere else but in God's hands. She laid it on that bed. She said, I'm not going anywhere but to God's man, to God's voice, to God's word. Amen. And I speak over anointings in this room. I speak over revival in this room. I speak over the power of God in this community. I speak over the power of God in this church. Please, somebody hear me today. Please don't bury the baby. Please don't give up on dreams. Please don't give up on what God is doing. Please don't give up on the concept of apostolic revival in La Ronge, Louisiana. Please don't do it. Don't bury the baby. It came from God and it's going to continue from God. Amen. Just lift your voices with me for a moment right now. Lift your voices with me for a moment right now. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, dear Lord. We worship you, dear Lord. We worship you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Just, just a couple more things. I was about to walk out of the office. About to walk out of the office, and I looked down, and there was a brochure on the, on the little table in the pastor's office. And it was a brochure, and, and again, I just... I don't have a note one today. I ain't trying to preach a sermon. I think y'all figured that out already. But anytime I'm coming to minister or preach, my antennas are out every direction. Just, Lord, what do you want to say? I, I picked up that brochure, not looking for a word from God. I just picked it up. And it's a brochure of this church ministry called Rise Up Recovery. And inside is a picture of all, some of you, if you're involved in that ministry, would you raise your hand? I looked at every picture, read some of the bios. Pastor, when did y'all start that? Was that earlier this year? January? I looked at every one of those pictures and I don't know your stories. I hadn't asked Brother Denny, well, what about this person in this picture? This they hadn't done that. I just looked through those pictures and the Lord impressed me. All hell is busted out for some of these folks since they started this ministry. I don't have to have you to tell me that's the truth because I know what I felt. Some of y'all have been bulldozed since you dove into, am I, am I telling the truth? Some of you have been hit hard since you started that ministry. Amen. But rise up, recovery ain't going down. Rise up, recovery. Rise up, recovery. Don't rise up. Speak that in Jesus' name. Amen. I saw your pictures. I looked at your faces. I want to dive in, Pastor. I want to help. I want to be a part of reaching our community. And hell will come in a side door and try to blow your family up. Hell will come in looking for a handle to twist you up in 18 different directions. He'll come in looking for anything. Why? Because a beautiful ministry. Amen. I, I heard the reports of the first service or two. I heard the reports of what all was happening. I heard the reports of what all was un, un, unfolding. And it may still be going great. I just know when I looked at those pictures in that brochure the Holy Ghost just spoke to me beautiful things are being burned in this community and the enemy will come from every side going well let me see if I can twist this up let me see if I can yank this chain let me see if I can do this let me ask you this 
How many of you had, and, and, and this may be the most different I ever preached for you, okay? But again, I don't feel like I'm walking in the role of an evangelist today. I don't claim to be a prophet, but there's an anointing in this house, and I hope you receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. But how many of you in those special services with Brother Ryan Near at the beginning of the year, how many of you had something that you know was from God, an experience that hell cannot shake, an experience that was divine, that was incredible, that was beautiful. I, I saw pictures of some of you men and ladies out on the front porch at midnight at one in the morning crying out to God. Now how many of you will be honest enough with me to say, Brother Greg, that was divine. That was from heaven. God birthed some things. God yeah, I'm walking in the Holy Ghost right now. God did some things. God initiated some things. The prophet spoke some things. You might even say, oh God, this, this, please, please don't tease us. This seems too good to be true. Are we about to break through to be an apostolic church in the Roger? Amen. God burst. How many of you? It was an absolute Holy Ghost God moment. Some of you that just raised your hands and gone through hell since then. And you've wondered, have I even heard from God? That seemed like six years ago, much less six months ago. Because what God birthed, it seemed like it laid on my lap and died. What God birthed, it seems like it doesn't have a chance to live. What God was birthing, it seems... Y'all hear me? The enemy will come in every side. He's just looking for a handle to twist. He's just looking for a chain to yank. He's just looking for something to try to kill the baby, to try to distract and stop what God would do. I'm not asking you to say amen or oh me. Amen. But many of you have been hit hard. Just, just, just a little nod. Am I telling the truth for somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Some of you maybe. Well, why, why do we even have Brother Near? Mm -hmm. Why would God have us on our faces on the concrete out there and worshiping the Lord? Amen. I'm surprised the neighbors didn't call the cops on y'all from the video. I yeah. Why did God even do that? Yeah. It's going to be hammered in my life and my situation so much. Honey, God ain't a tease on us. God ain't teasing you. There's apostolic revival for this community, for this church, for your family. Would you close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord right now? Please don't bury the baby. Please don't bury the calling. Please don't bury the anointing of the Lord. Brother Greg, it sat on my lap and died, okay? Put it on the prophet's bed. Amen. You get a hold of God. You don't stop praying. You don't stop fasting. You don't stop believing. You don't stop calling on God. She didn't go anywhere else but to the, to the house of God, to the voice of God, to the voice of the word of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. He come down. Please don't bury the baby. Please don't bury your calling. Please don't bury God's plans for your life, for, for your church, for this community. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to start with the Rise Up Recovery because I just know what I felt when I grabbed that brochure. It wasn't a million miles from my mind until I grabbed that brochure. But if you're a part of that ministry, I want you to stand up right now. Amen. And again, I'm not, I'm not asking for confessions or testimonies. I'm just saying some of y'all has been through it since then. Take the hand of someone beside you and lift it to the heavens right now. Take the hand of someone beside you and lift it to the heavens right now. Amen. If you're close to one of them, just extend your hand. Amen. When I grabbed that brochure, amen, the Lord just impressed me. Some of them have been hit hard. They're questioning what, what, what's going on. Did we do the right thing? Amen. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. God's doing a work of reaching hurting lives and bringing deliverance. In, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless my brother and my sister. Bless my brothers and sisters in this house right now. Thank you for reaching the hurting. Thank you for reaching the struggling. Thank you for reaching for those. Ha, yeah, yeah, ha, ha. Church, can we all stand together right now? 
all stand together right now. Lord, some that had a holy apostolic experience when Brother Near was here. Their spirit's been hit hard. Their spirit's been hammered. God, I'm speaking an unction from the Holy Ghost right now. Amen. Would you lift your hands to the heavens across this house? Would you cry out to Jesus right now? Don't bury the baby. God's got a resurrection coming. Amen. God may just be releasing your grip on the promise, but the promise is going to live. The promise is going to live. In the name that's above every name, don't bury the baby. Amen. Don't bury the child of promise. Don't bury the revival that God's trying to bring. Don't do it. You keep believing. You keep trusting Jesus. You keep holding on. God wasn't teasing you with that supernatural apostolic flow that came in this house. God's not. No, 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 no. Jesus in the name of 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 Jesus brother Greg you don't understand that baby sat on my lap and cried and it died it's gone it's dead no 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 take it to the prophet's chamber amen go get a hold of God amen until nothing else suffices make sure you hear from God not man make sure you get a word from God name of Jesus. I speak revival into this church. I speak apostolic anointing into this church. I speak apostolic favor into this church. I speak blessing from the throne room into this house. I speak the anointing from heaven into this house. I speak apostolic unity. I speak power from the throne room. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. As many as will. As many as will, I'm asking you to come just stand. Let's not kneel, let's come stand. As many as will, come stand. We're going to pray together for a moment. As many as will, if you're not comfortable, then you stay right where you are. Pray, still pray. If you're not comfortable coming up front, but as many as will, just come. I thought God burned it. He did. I thought God was in it. He was. I thought God was the one that said that it was. Amen. It just, it just may feel to you like the baby's died on your lap. Put it on the prophet's bed. Amen. She said, I won't stop and I, I, until I find the prophet. She wrapped her arms around the feet of that prophet. She said, I won't leave you until, until something happens. I won't leave you until something happens. You don't give up on your Holy Ghost right now. You don't give up on the work of God in your life right now. You don't give up on the work of God in your family right now. You don't give up on the work of God in your home right now. You don't give up on the work of God in this youth group right now. You don't give up on the work of God in the Sunday school classes. You don't give up on the work of God in your Bible studies. You don't give up on the work of God on the worship team. You don't give up on the work of God in this church body. There's an anointing. There's an apostolic anointing. There's a virtue. Amen. God burned it. Hell may try to kill it. But God will see to it that what was birthed by his word lives. What was birthed by his plan that is going to make it is going to thrive. I deliver my soul to you. Just cry out to God right now. Just cry out to the Lord right now.
keeps hitting me so strong. I'm saying it as I'm praying for me. The child truly died in her lap. But it's what she did with it that led to the rest of the story. She put it, a child in the prophet's chamber. And she said, I'm going, that word that started this whole journey, I'm going back to that word. And she went and did whatever it took to found that word, that representation from heaven. She wrapped her arms around that prophet's feet. That word that had come from God. And she said, I'm not stopping till you come back in my house. I won't leave you. And I'm telling somebody, you don't listen to man's word. You, you get a determination in your spirit. I'm going to pursue God until God gives a word. And I'm bringing that in back in my home. I felt to say that two or three times in praying for people. You get that. You, you, you go. She went on a journey. She said, ride fast, ride hard. And unless I tell you to stop, you don't stop. You don't slow down. I got to find the problem. She wrapped her arm around his feet. She said, I will not leave you. You're coming back to my house. Amen. So I'm just telling somebody, don't let that promise may be dead, but don't bury it. You get a hold of God and you bring that word from God back in your home. You get a hold of the things of God. The word, that's what you pursue when it seems like your promise is being attacked. You pursue God with all your heart. Wrap your arms around his feet. Bring him back in your home. She didn't just say speak a word. No, she said, you're coming back with me. And you're going to deal with this and put God's anointing on those promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together again. There's a, a depth. There's a work of God in your lives. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. God, some things were birthed in this church at the beginning of this year. They were birthed in this community at the beginning of this year. Amen. They came from the throne room. Amen. They came from heaven. They came from Almighty God. Some of you got callings. You got anointings. You got things from heaven.
God is arresting our attention and affirming his word. Those two words came to me. He's arresting our attention and affirming his word. Amen. Would you just lift your hearts and cry out to him again? Thank you, God, for that word. Thank you for vessels. Amen. Lord, I want my spirit right. Amen. I want my spirit right, Jesus. Amen. I want our spirits right, Jesus. My dad taught me you can even be right sometimes, but if you're wrong in spirit, you're wrong. I want my spirit right. I want my spirit right. The Holy Ghost just said, take what's wrong and make it right. Lord, I want to be right before you. I humble myself. Lead us and guide us, Lord. I don't want to be attached to confusion. I want to be attached to your word. That's what the Holy Ghost was saying when he kept telling me to say, wrap your arms around that prophet, amen, in the spirit realm. Wrap your arm around that word from God and bring it back to your house and that be the only thing that you listen to and receive. Amen. In Jesus' name. Would you just lift your hearts to the Lord and worship Him right now? Cry out to Him right now. Those ministering to others near you, just let that happen right now. There's anointing oil in this house. Amen. There's the Word coming into the atmosphere right now. Like a lightning bolt, the Word of God from the heavens is coming into the atmosphere right now. Coming this day into this atmosphere. I can't tell you I'll share you tell you. God speaks in this atmosphere today. The word of God has spoken through tongues and interpretation in this atmosphere today. The word of God speaks. One version of Hebrews 4.12 said, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart and that word comes into this atmosphere as a lightning bolt dividing asunder it said it knows it can go inside of our soul and see the difference between soul and spirit you and I don't know the difference where soul is and I don't even know all that realm happens inside and this says the word of God is powerful it's quick it is sharp it is active and it can divide even our soul and spirit the joints and the marrow and that word can come in and judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart the word of God is spoken and the word of God like a lightning bolt comes into this atmosphere God is doing the work in 
spirit room, not only in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray as long as you want. Love you also.